Thank you so much, Emily. I've got bad news for you. Your memory is failing you. We were in the same room once. It was a long time ago. It was in Hong Kong. It was a bar room. <laughs> but we were younger then. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure to be here. I'm very familiar with the work um, that you do and have been for many years, and I've seen it bringing practical benefit in different parts of the world. Now, I've spent much of the last 25 years of my life in conflict zones, reporting on genocide, on civil war, on famine, on all the misery that we as human beings are capable of inflicting on each other. And yet, in spite of that, I remain an incurable optimist. I have great faith in people. I have great faith in our capacity to work things out. Now, I've just come back from Paris, and these words might seem strange from somebody who's come back from a city that's in a state of trauma, that's still struggling to come to terms with what happened, why it happened. It's asking fundamental questions about their own society, about community breakdown, about the power of extremist ideas and the influence that they can have on impressionable or alienated or despair-filled young minds. So all of these things are happening in France. But last Friday, I was walking back after the ceremonies at the Bataclan concert hall. People had gathered a week on to light candles and just stand in silence. And as I was coming back up, uh, walking up the street, I heard loud music and I looked in and there was a crowded bar and standing on the bar were seven or eight young people dancing their hearts out. And I stopped and I said to a friend of mine, I said, come here. I said, look at that. That's why I believe in humanity. Because we do get up. And many of you will know it from your own personal lives. You take the most horrendous knocks and you get up and go on. Nobody taught me that lesson better than Roman Halter. You saw his photograph here earlier. Now, the first time I ever met Roman Halter was up in Hendon, and he was in the middle of a fight with a rabbi. And I said to myself, it was Judy Hassan um, at Jewish Care who introduced me to, to Roman many, many years ago. And he was in the middle of this spirited argument uh, with the rabbi. I can't even remember what it was about now, because there were so many arguments involving Roman since then that that one has faded into antiquity in my mind. But here was a man I very quickly learned was a man in full, a force of nature, who had survived the horrors of the Holocaust and come here and forged a new life. Uh, and who always said to me, and over the years we became very close friends and had many deep and for me very meaningful conversations. And he said, no matter how uncomfortable you feel, speak the truth that you see. And he said, especially, no matter how uncomfortable you make other people feel, speak the truth that you see. I try to do that as a journalist, and it isn't always easy. There are various different constraints that operate on you. But one of the things that I'm more and more conscious of is the need as a reporter not to convey to those who watch or listen to what I do a message of despair. It's absolutely essential. If you watched the news media online, in newspapers, television, you really would think there wasn't much point in going on. You would see this as a world which is perpetually under siege, where the only voices that counted were those of extremists and ideologues. That's partly to do with the fact that there's just so much more information around now, so much at the flick of a switch, the press of a button, we're inundated with it. We have more information than we've ever had, but we probably understand less than we've ever done. But there is hope. I'll tell you just a couple of stories. One is from Ukraine, a place where your organization does such magnificent work, Eastern Ukraine. At the height of the conflict last summer, 
I was sent out and produced several reports on the fighting and shelling that was going on. And to be honest with you, not many of them had much of an impact on the audience. And then I went to a suburb, a place called Pesky, which is next to the airport in Donetsk. It was quite a hair-raising drive to get in there, a lot of shelling going on. And when I got in, I met there a couple, Anatoly and Sophia. And they were living on this tiny little patch of land where they kept bees, where they kept hens, where they still grew vegetables. And their vegetable patch was cratered by mortars. And I said to them, why on earth do you stay here? Why do you stay here? And he said, well, she went away to the city, but I had to stay to protect what we had created together. And I looked at her and I said, why did you come back? He was too lonely without me. Love had brought her back. Now, it's a word we shy away as foreign correspondents and journalists from using because it's somehow too sissy, too soft-hearted. I have no problem using it. I've been under fire enough times, witnessed enough of death and destruction to be very sure of my manliness or lack of it, whatever the circumstance demands. So I will happily use the word love as the essential ingredient. In a place like Ukraine, in keeping some idea of civilization and humanity alive, or in a place like Rwanda during the genocide, when I came across a 14-year-old girl called Valentina Izribagaya, who, to survive, had to lie under the corpses of her parents. And she did this. She hid amongst the corpses for nearly two weeks before being rescued. And I met her the day after she was rescued. She was a skeletal frame, huge gash in her head, her hand chopped off. She already had gangrene. I didn't believe she'd make it. A year later, I went back to the village, a year after the genocide, and I found out that she had survived, but she was extremely traumatized. But year after year, I went back, and I saw her grow stronger. An aunt had survived the genocide, the only other family member and took her in and gave her the love that her parents would have given her. And last year, I get an email from the United States telling me that Valentina is in America studying to be a lawyer. That's what we're about. That's far more what we're about than sticking suicide belts on ourselves or torturing people to death in basements. Our story, the human story, yes, it is one littered with appalling brutality. Go back as far as you like in humanity. But deeper than that, stronger than that, more important than that, is our capacity to get up and go on and to build and create and renew. So have faith in that idea in this time of fear. Don't fall prey to the voices of fear, those who want to whip us up and make us afraid of the other, and whether they do that, whatever medium they try to use. Primo Levi, the Holocaust survivor, used the beautiful expression, haunting expression about the bestial vice of hatred. Whatever provocation is given, let us not fall to that. Thank you very much.